As the scientific world still basks in the incredibly detailed images of Saturn's rings that were beamed back to Earth by NASA's Cassini spacecraft, the European Space Agency is starting to build a spacecraft that is designed to look far beyond the planets of our solar system. Here are the details. The European Space Agency, or ESA, reports that it has signed a contract with Airbus to build ESA's third exoplanet probing spacecraft. Dubbed Ariel, the spacecraft is expected to launch in 2029 on ESA's new Ariane 6 rocket. It will operate from the second Lagrange point, or L2, which is located 1.5 million kilometers directly behind Earth when viewed from the Sun. ESA says Ariel will feature advanced sensors and a very stable thermal and mechanical design, enabling it to carry out long-term observations of an exoplanet system for up to three days. Ariel will study around 1,000 extrasolar planets in visible and infrared wavelengths. It is the first mission dedicated to measuring the chemical composition and thermal structures of exoplanets, linking each one to the environment of its host star. Ariel will analyze these exoplanets to get an idea of how they formed and how they evolved. ESA believes this data can help us find out whether there is life elsewhere in our universe and if there is another life-supporting planet like Earth. If Ariel launches in 2029, it will become ESA's third exoplanet probing spacecraft after Cheops, which launched in 2019, and Plato, which is scheduled to launch in 2026. China has developed a space weapon that can creep into the tailpipes of enemy satellites where it would grab on and hide, waiting for the right time to blow up. Here are the details. The South China Morning Post reports that Chinese scientists say they've created a space weapon that attaches itself to the inside of an enemy satellite's booster exhaust cone. The scientists published their weapon research in the Chinese journal Electronic Technology and Software Engineering in September. They say that the weapon is designed to fit snugly in the exhaust cones of the gas boosters that move satellites around. The device weighs only 3.5 kilograms and, once it has entered the exhaust cone, would use an electric motor to extend a thin probe that can pass through the narrowest part of the booster. Once inside the booster chamber, the probe would expand to keep the device firmly attached and hidden inside the exhaust cone. The device can then wait for a long time before it detonates a special melt-cast explosive that burns slowly, simulating an engine malfunction and severely damaging the satellite. The scientists say the probe's attachment sequence can also be reversed to release the weapon from the target. The South China Morning Post says the U.S. military has already voiced concerns about China's Shijian-17, an experimental probe with a robotic arm that has conducted some unusual maneuvers since its launch in 2016. A NASA spacecraft has touched the sun. Here's what you need to know. For the first time ever, a spacecraft has touched the sun, with NASA announcing its Parker Solar Probe has flown through the sun's upper atmosphere. The milestone was reached on April 28th during the probe's eighth flyby of the sun, and CNN notes that it will ultimately make 21 close approaches over seven years. The sun has no solid crust, but the Alvin critical surface marks the boundary of its atmosphere, according to the Johns Hopkins University Applied Physics Laboratory. Outside it, solar wind particles travel faster than the magnetic waves that couple them to the sun's surface. Inside it, the opposite is true, and thus the particles are contained by the waves. The Parker probe flew in and out of this boundary several times over a few hours during April and collected data on the origin of zigzag-shaped structures in the solar wind. It found that these structures, called switchbacks, can be produced by convection cells at the sun's visible surface, which churn and create funnels of magnetic energy above the surface. When the probe set off in 2019, it had to contend with the fact that the Earth travels 67,000 miles per hour in a sideways motion relative to the sun to avoid being pulled into it, meaning any object traveling to the sun must cancel that motion. In order to do this, it was launched by the powerful Delta IV heavy rocket before performing seven Venus flybys over a seven-year period, relying on the planet's gravity to draw its orbit closer to the Sun. Such a massive workload is ultimately aimed at solving mysteries like why the Sun's corona, or outer atmosphere, is millions of degrees hotter than the Sun's surface, or improving forecasts of space weather events, which can disrupt telecommunications and damage satellites around Earth, according to NASA. The Voyager spacecraft have found that space is more dense outside the solar system. Here is what you need to know. NASA's Voyager 2 crossed into interstellar space in November of 2018 after a 41-year voyage, but its mission is far from over. 
According to research published in the journal Astrophysical Letters, as Voyager 2 moves farther from our solar system, the density of space is increasing. This supports findings from Voyager 1, which entered interstellar space at a different location in 2012. The solar system's theoretical boundary is called the heliopause. An article published on NASA's website describes the heliopause as the place where the solar wind, which emanates from our sun, is no longer strong enough to push back interstellar winds from the surrounding stars. Inside is the heliosphere, a huge bubble of the sun's magnetic influence made by the solar wind that extends far beyond Pluto. This bubble was thought to be shaped like a comet with a rounded leading edge and tail as it orbits the Milky Way. The heliospheric nose is situated between the two voyagers. But a study published in the journal Nature Astronomy in March using data from NASA missions suggests the heliosphere may in fact be shaped like a deflated croissant. A 3D simulation created using the data shows a curving central bulge with two jets caused by the solar magnetic field shooting away from it. The authors of the study write that the increase in density detected by the Voyager spacecraft could be due to interstellar magnetic fields becoming stronger as they approach and drape over the heliopause. Another theory is that the material blown by the interstellar wind might slow down and build up as it approaches the heliopause. More data is needed from the two voyagers to try to untangle this mystery. However, as the authors of the study note, it is not certain whether the voyagers will be able to operate far enough to distinguish between these two classes of models. Voyager mission team members estimate the spacecraft's transmitters will go quiet in the late 2020s or perhaps in the 2030s. And then they will be alone, out there in the vastness of interstellar space, until their next close encounter with a cosmic object 40,000 years from now. NASA's OSIRIS-REx spacecraft is about to become the first American spacecraft to grab a piece of an asteroid and bring it back to Earth. During its many months of orbiting and analyzing the asteroid, the spacecraft found signs that the asteroid might contain water and organic compounds. NASA's OSIRIS-REx spacecraft has been orbiting around asteroid Bennu for almost two years and is scheduled to grab a sample from the 500-meter-wide space rock on October 20th. Having spent months analyzing the composition and surface of the asteroid, the spacecraft is now ready to fold up its solar panels, unfold its sampling arm, and slowly descend to touch the asteroid's surface. When its probe touches the surface, it will blow high-pressure nitrogen gas into the soil, stirring up loose material. A filter within the sample head will trap rocks and dirt while allowing the gas to escape into space. Next, the spacecraft will fire its thrusters and retreat to a safe distance with its precious cargo. Back in orbit, a special camera will be used to make sure the sample head does not have harmful debris sticking out of it. Next, the spacecraft will measure the mass of the sample by extending the sampler arm all the way and spinning around. The craft will then calculate the change in its inertia to determine the sample's mass. If the sample mass is more than 60 grams, the spacecraft will store the sample head inside its return capsule. The capsule will protect the sample during the violence of re-entry, after which it will release a parachute to stabilize and reduce speed for a safe touchdown in Utah. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.